half in the bag. Who took all my prescription drugs? <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. What time is it? What is time anyway? But the ticking of a clock until we turn to dust. Oh, don't get all existential on me, you can't. I've gone down and pissed myself, and we both appear to have missing time. What was that? I said, don't get all existential on me. I've gone down and pissed myself, and we both appear to have missing time. Oh. What didn't you hear? Ah, missing time. And like a good noir mystery, we might have to retrace our steps and figure out what happened. That's right, Jay. Let's go sit in our chairs. Bones are aching, Annie. Oh. Ow! Oh. My everything hurts. Yeah, it's really weird. <sighs> Mr. Plankett? Mr. Plankett? Just check something here. Who are you calling? I'm checking to see if I called Mr. Plankett's cell phone. Mr. Plinkett has a cell phone? Yes, dummy. Don't you remember we bought him one for his 116th birthday? Oh. It's one of those big old people phones that can only make and receive calls. Oh. But it has a secret built-in GPS tracking app so we could track him. Oh. I'm checking it now. Oh. Hmm, interesting. It says he's at the VCR repair shop. What? Hello? Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Lightning fast VCR. This is Harry speaking. How can I help you? Uh, Mr. Plinkett? What are you doing at the VCR repair shop? Oh, you asked me to come in and mine the shop. Yeah, you, you, you told me that you and Jay wanted to take some time off to go on a drug binge. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, are you guys done fucking around yet? This place is nuts. People are going crazy. They want their VCRs fixed. Apparently VHS tapes are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars now. Let me call you back. What? What? Ah, uh, fucking whatever. God damn it, I just fixed that. Ah, uh, now I gotta fix it more. Glumbiza? What the fuck is Glembiza? I have no idea. It says take two tablets four times a day for extreme elderly pain. The prescription was filled just yesterday and most of it's gone. Oh snap, we must have taken Mr. Plinkett's new pain meds to get high. That's so us. Oh boy, here, watch this. Mm. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a glare, but that's, that's, that's good. That's good. There's four ads. Oh, shit. Before the ad. What the hell is Raid Shadow Legends? Jesus fucking Christ, I should finally subscribe to YouTube Premium. It's only 99 cents a year. Oh, here it goes. If you're over 100 and life's little aches and pains are starting to take their toll, try Glembiza. Your entire body will be cleansed in pain-free pharmaceutical magic. You'll feel young again. Warning, Glembiza is not for everyone. Do not take if you're allergic to Glembiza. Do not take if you are 99 years old or younger. Glembiza can cause memory loss, confusion, loss of vision, decreased appetite, suicidal thoughts and depression, stiff joints, uncontrolled diarrhea, urinary incontinence, hearing loss, sudden heart failure, osteoporosis, and rapid onset aging. Oh. My. God. Do I want to play Raid Shadows Legends? I just looked up Glembiza on the Reddit forum slash taking grandpa's pills, and it says, do not take Glembiza, in all caps. While the initial high is amazing and lasts for days, the side effects are... I'm sorry, what? What? You were saying? The side effects are 
terrible. And they can last forever. Interesting. You want to talk about the black phone? Oh, sure. Would you like to see a magic trick? From the director of Bagool. It's a new kind of monster, Ethan Hawke. He drives around in a creepy child molester van and kidnaps children. And his character in the movie is pretty evil too. All joking aside, you did not really mean that about Ethan Hawke. No, no. There, as far as I'm aware, there's never been any allegations of anything against Ethan Hawke. Seems like a very nice man. He's yes. very passionate about acting. Yes, he is. And I did not know he was the villain in this movie. This is another one we were talking about uh, last time, how I don't watch trailers for certain things. Didn't see the trailer for this. I just saw a poster with that mask. I think I'd heard somewhere that Tom Savini designed the mask, which I thought was pretty cool, because he doesn't really do much yeah. anymore. Multiple masks. Multiple masks, yeah, yeah. So this movie was a big surprise to me. Uh, it was in theaters like a week ago, and now it's on VOD. Yeah, it, it came on VOD rather quickly, and I, I knew Ethan Hawke was in it because his name is very prominently positioned on the poster. No, I knew he was in it. I didn't know he was the guy behind the mask. Oh! Here's the thing with this movie is uh, I scour, I scour the, the uh, I take my scraper and I go to the bottom of the barrel and I look for anything because <laughs> I like watching horror pictures. Uh, I really enjoy them. But uh, yeah, there's uh, this movie called Abandoned with Emma Roberts. Which you theorize is a Boy in the Walls movie? I saw the trailer and yeah, Michael Shannon's in it. He shows up, he's red herring. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. But I guess you folks aren't from around here. She said, there's something creepy about this house. Someone died in this house. Or did they? And then they show a little like person run by. And then she's like, I hear things in the walls. And I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. It what happened to the boy? He wasn't killed. He lives in the house next door. And, and it feels like a pandemic movie. Like we had uh, Emma Roberts, uh, her husband is played by John Gallagher, and then Michael Shannon plays uh, Red Herring, who lives next door. Michael Shannon's a good actor. It's a shame he's doing this stuff now. Yeah, Boy in the Wall movies. He's like, he's like, well, I used to live in this house, but I live down the road, and you better be careful. Uh, so it's like three actors in a farmhouse, and I'm like, ah, pandemic movie. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, a minefield of, of stuff. And I saw Black Phone, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like only in theaters. I'm like, oh, horror. Uh, Ethan Hawke's in it, and then Scott Derrickson's the director. Uh, he did Doctor Strange, he did uh, the, the Bagul movies. It's, it's the movie he, he jumped off of the Marvel train to make. The Doctor Strange 2, he left over creative differences. Yeah. We all know what that means. Yeah, Bagul, <laughs> a.k.a. Sinister. Uh, uh, Just what, the first one he did. Yeah, what else did he do? Uh, oh, he got to start with one of those direct-to-video Hellraiser sequels. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going now more so on what the hook and the premise is as opposed to uh, the production value. I'll go with like, you know, ooh, this looks good. I, I like the pedigree almost. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm not going to totally waste my time. They got some good actors in it. And of course, Ethan Hawke has worked with him on Sinister. And uh, so I was like, all right. And that popped up on VOD and I'm like, Pretty, pretty narrow uh, theatrical window there. Yeah, which is smart. Yeah. You know what was on TV, on cable? Uh, uh, is cable still a thing? Uh, yeah, I have, I have cable. People still have cable. Uh, there was a movie that came out, uh, I think in the 90s, called Searching for Bobby Fisher. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I'm watching it, and, it, and it's so fucking boring. <laughs> and I'm like... Did they find Bobby Fisher? Well... Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's about him becoming the chess champion or whatever. But I'm like, this played in movie theaters. People went and purchased tickets to watch. I remember when it came out. It was like searching a... for Bobby Fisher, and I and the the thought of that 
is just like mind blowing <laughs> that that would happen today. Like a movie like that would play in the theaters. Oh yeah, if you're talking about like what gets theatrical, yeah. Movies, you know, and yeah. so it's like I'm like I'm not, we, we've said it before, but Marvel movies, yeah. Disney movies, a uh, movie like that could get made today, but it would not be like it'd be like an Apple TV Plus exclusive. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was like, what's in the theater? Jurassic World Dominion. Mar- uh, the new Marvel crap. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder. And, and horror. Horror still does well. Horror has consistently done well for decades. Yeah. It's the one one reliable genre. It's also like a, it's a, it's a teen thing. So that, you know, teens have nothing to do. Mm. Uh, it keeps them away from the fentanyl. And then so they're like, well, let's go to the theater and hang out, you know, and then afterwards we'll, we'll do fentanyl in the parking lot. But but what do they, you think teens would have thought of this film? Oh, they would not have liked this film. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's a little backstory. Um, uh, I guess we should get into it. What did you think of the Black Phone? I liked it a lot. I was surprised when I think of because I knew Scott Derrickson. I just think of Bagul. I barely remember anything about that movie other than the the creepy like it milk meter stuff. Yeah. And then the ending, and there's a jump scare ending. Oh my God, Bagul! So you leave the theater on a jump scare. Yeah. So I kind of, even though this looked pretty decent, I assumed it was going to go that route, and then it never does. Before I forget, did you notice the Bagul reference? No. Um, in the basement where the kid is being kidnapped, mm-hmm. uh, along the wall is like, like a blood trail. Oh, like the poster. I, I think it's supposed to be like rust. Or it it's, could yeah, be there's blood. like a crack. Going yeah, it. but it's the very similar to the poster where Bagul is like ah, walking along the wall. I didn't even look at that. But this is a more mature movie than Bagul. Well, it's this a, is a super, super simple movie in yes. the best possible way. Yeah, it's a it's a flip on um, the concept that the the villain is the one with the the paranormal supernatural abilities. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, I kept waiting, like, what's his backstory? What's, there's more to this. What's going on? Why, what's with the phone? Right. And it's nothing. Yeah. It's uh, nothing. Yeah. Put that on the poster. Yeah. It's nothing. Well, you expect, <laughs> you see the creepy mask, Ethan Ox playing, and you think he's going to be a supernatural-esque villain. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it, it is a total uh, reversal yeah. on, on that concept. The supernatural elements are with the victim, uh, the little kid kidnapping. The movie takes place in 1978, um, and you know that late 70s, early 80s. There was that kind of that whole concept of kid kidnapping. You know, Adam Walsh and that kind of all that kind of stuff was going on, and, and, and parents became more aware of it. And um, whether or not uh, actual kid kidnapping and murders were higher then than they were in like the 50s, 40s, 30s, or if it was a result of media. Yeah. M- mass media becoming more prominent. Watch out. Mm-hmm. Don't be playing the arcade game at the Sears all by yourself. So... Well, you end up getting abducted in a van. It's always in a van. That, that's always the... And I was a little worried about that early on, too. It was like, are they just doing the cliche, kidnaps kids in a van, but... Jay, a van is the most efficient way to kidnap someone. Sure, sure. And I say in terms of like a horror movie, it seems almost like a cliche at this point. Like get abducted by the creepy guy in the van. The creep van, yeah. But it works works not, well in this movie. It's not overplayed. No. It's just a function of well, the story. And uh, speaking of it being simple, uh, it, it works for his character because we don't really learn a lot about Ethan Hawke's villain. Right. Um, but he has like the van, says like it's like abracadabra like entertainment supplies or something. So it's like maybe he was a children's entertainer. The way he talks and kind of interacts with the kid a little bit, like when he's showing off his mask, he's very like theatrical. Yeah. So it's like that might be it, but the movie doesn't over explain any of it. It 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 keeps everything vague. It could be his front or his story to lure kids in. Yeah. Like he's, he has black balloons. That just adds a creepy element to it, but you know, he's not really good at it. Like, he would dress up more colorful and be like, hey, I mean, the, the, the have you seen my lost dog? Mm-hmm. Or, hey, I've got a bunch of candy in my van or the classics. Yeah. Um, but he takes a different route and maybe he's just really bad at it. That could be too. I mean, he's clearly like socially awkward and uncomfortable with himself, hence the masks. There's a lot wrong with him, but we're never told. Yes. Because, and this is, this is the important part with the movie, 
Uh, we're going to get into spoilers because this is going to be kind of a short review. Sure. This is kind of an impromptu review. We we're just like, oh, hey, this movie's yeah. on. Let's watch it. Oh, um, all right. Let's talk about it. And it's not like, it's not Mike and Jay talk about worthy. I didn't like just absolutely love this movie, but I really, really um, respected it because of its simplicity. Yes. And it didn't go into like, it was a horror movie, but it was about bigger things. And we'll talk about that. And it wasn't like Conjuring where it's like, ah, I'm, yeah. a bull. I'm a, uh, the house is going to explode now. Any, any of the larger studio movies that come out now, that's what I, I'm waiting for it to turn yeah. into that. And this never does. Um, but if you want to hear more about the black uh, phone and you've seen it or, or want to see it and don't care about spoilers, here we go. Hang up the phone now. The, uh, at some point watching it, I was like, this feels very Stephen King-ish. Very Stephen King-ish. I'm like, is this a short story by Stephen King? Sort of. Then I see based on a short story by Joe Hill, and I'm like, oh, it's not a short story by Stephen King. This is where I'm clueless because <laughs> I look up Joe Hill and I realize he is the son of Stephen King who looks like exactly like him exactly like young stephen king with the beard and the glasses yeah yes uh and his name is joe uh hilligard king mm. but his pen name is joe hill he should have called himself joe bachman mm, that's that a little clever, nod yeah. yeah but uh whatever his, his pen name is uh he is the son of stephen king and he has a very similar writing style yeah well i was uh I saw his name pop up in the opening credits, like based on a short story. Yeah. And as the movie was going along, I was thinking like, I wonder if the story is just in that room for the movie. They expanded with the sister character and the cops looking for him. And the worst part of the movie, the brother, if we're in the spoilers, the cokehead brother character, he's barely in it, which is good because oh, that right. was that was comical, that performance. That guy was in the Sinister movie, too. Which means that the Grabber has to live somewhere in this area right here. That was a little uh, false flag kind of thing. Uh, I, I did like the, I don't know if you'd call it a subversion, but the cops go and they're immediately like, oh, this guy's like a conspiracy guy. He's got the whiteboard and all the information about all the missing kids. And he's like coked out of his mind. And he's just immediately trying to explain it all to him. And uh, the idea that, like, right when the cops leave, the camera just goes down to the basement. And we're like, oh, it's that house. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to making it, like, an attempt at a shocking reveal later. Well, I, I actually, Eagle Eye Mike, knew immediately that that was the house. Oh. Uh, there is a, uh, one of the, the girl, his uh, main character's little sister, she has kind of psychic premonitions in her dreams. And one of her dreams is her brother pounding on this door. And it's this weird door. It almost looks like a school door, but it's on the house mm -hmm. and has this big glass window with the, the metal X's that prevent it from being broken. Yeah. And then when the police come in to talk to the brother, very briefly, they, they show the door closing. Mm -hmm. And you see that it's that exact, very oh, specific type of door. And I'm like, he's in that house. But uh, they don't drag out the mystery of like, no. like a reveal later. Oh my God, he was underneath the guy's house the whole time. No, they just immediately pay yeah, down. Yeah. The reveal <laughs> is the second house. Yeah. But uh, which I saw that coming just because the way it was like edited, it felt very like uh, Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. and it turns out it's the wrong house. Like, yep, it is gonna yes. be the wrong house. And Jay's referring to. Clarice with the... the yeah, the, the, she's the, in the basement. We keep cutting to the, 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 cops, the cops showing up, and it turns out, oh, my God, those are two separate houses. Two separate houses. They do that same that's gimmick a, in this. That, that, uh, that, was, that particular sequence was taught in film school. Uh, yeah, I learned about it in film school, too. Where it's like cross-cutting mm -hmm. and misleading editing, and uh, it's a classic example of that. But, yeah, so, that, so there's that, and then the brother uh, eventually figures it out and comes down the stairs and discovers the kid has been kidnapped in the basement and then he gets an axe to the head and that was very misery-esque uh, with the sheriff. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, and then... Or, uh, well, this is the movie, not the Stephen King book, but the movie version of The Shining. Yeah. Scam Man Crothers spends the whole movie trying to get to the, yes. the hotel and immediately gets an axe to the chest. More, more accurate because it involved an axe, but, <laughs> but still, that, that moment when you think you're going to be saved, but... So that with that, and then um, the kidnapped boy is uh, the premises. He's locked in a basement, 
and this weird black phone keeps ringing and it's not even plugged into the wall and the ghosts of previous dead children are talking to him through the phone, giving him hints how to help him escape. Which again, is never pushed too far. It's like, they don't over explain it. It's like, he's just hearing voices from ghosts. Yes. That's all we need. But S the supernatural exists in this world. They got unfinished business, boom. Yeah, yeah. And he's so young, he doesn't quite, he's not quite um, as disbelieving of it or, yeah. uh, am I, you know, I'm on drugs. He, he's, he's young enough to kind of like believe in it because some of the kids that are dead are his friends. Mm -hmm. The, the through line of the whole movie isn't so much about Ethan Hawke's character. It's about a bigger thing, abuse, uh, bullying, standing up for yourself. Good scenes. Uh, it, I liked, not not that I liked seeing the kids being abused by their dad in this movie, but the, the bluntness of the brutality in this yeah. movie. The first half hour before anything really horror related happens is just kids in the 70s swearing and beating the crap out of each other. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird later on when, yeah, the, the message is more about... Uh, being assertive and uh, taking control of your life, but that it kind of relies on like, oh yeah, you got to beat the crap out of people. That's partially the message. Well, because he beats the crap out of Ethan Hawke at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, I mean, I know it's about standing up for yourself, but yeah, that like you said, that cycle of violence. We see the dad at the beginning, yeah, just like beating the daughter with a belt. That's yes. great acting in that scene, that kid. Yeah, yeah. We do not see child abuse on camera in movies anymore. And, and a little, a little, I shouldn't applaud this, but, <laughs> but no, in terms well, just of... showing something so kind of like uh, real. It, it wasn't indulgent. It served the purpose of the story. Yeah. And that's important. I, I think of that in comparison to those recent It movies and everything felt so like over the top yeah. as far as that yeah. stuff goes. No, this is, this is grounded in reality even though there were ghosts calling people on the phone. Yeah. Well, that's, More that's grounded in reality than It. Oh, by, by far. Yeah. Um, Scott Derrickson should have directed It maybe. But that's what I like about this movie is that it didn't indulge in like the whims of the studio. Yeah. Why don't we have a scene where Ethan Hawke comes down and he turns into a monster and then, ah, and then the house blows up and gets sucked into a vortex into space. And Scott Derrickson says, well, that doesn't make any sense for the story. And they say, ah, it's right. a dream sequence, whatever. Just put it in there so we can put it in the trailer. Yeah, but our hero kid, uh, he's just a kid and he's got his little sister, um, the little sister has like visions or dreams. Again, very Stephen King like. Very Stephen King like, and then the father is a drunk who's who's just not having that because the mother is dead, mm -hmm. and I think she had some kind of mental problems, and uh, either that or she also had visions that they mistook for mental problems. Again, they keep that sure. vague. It's vague. Yeah. She, I think she might have just been uh, had some kind of mental illness, sure. and then. The little girl reminds him of that, so he gets so mad, he's like beating her with a belt. Mm -hmm. our, our kid brother doesn't help, uh, he's too scared. Mm -hmm. Then you got the bullies at school. The bullies at school beat him up, and then they start beating the sister up. Yeah. And he's too scared to do anything about it. Um, so there's all that, and, and he admires his friend um, who, who helps him out, um, who eventually gets kidnapped as well. And so I really like the scenes, and this is these are movies that I like where the kid's trapped in the basement, mm -hmm. um, and he's getting the phone calls, and they're like, "Go try to get up the window, you know, use rope from this to kind of get the bars off and escape." And Ethan Hawke is not his backstory is not explained, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Don't need it. The kid doesn't know, so we don't know. The kid doesn't know, so we don't know, and we don't need to know. Mm -hmm. And He's clearly playing a game with the kids that he locks in the basement. He wants them to escape so that he can kill them. Yeah. And he intentionally leaves the door unlocked. We, we see him a lot of times, and this, again, is like a callback to the dad. He's always just like sitting in the kitchen. And yes. the dad is beating the kid right, in the kitchen. Right, right. So. It's, it's, it's at heart, it's a film about family. Oh, no! And it's a film about... Beating the crap out of people. <laughs> about child abuse yeah, yeah. And, and the worst form of it and overcoming it and 
standing up for yourself. Uh, there's themes. <laughs> Fem Femmes. But where's Bagul? Uh, Ethan Hawke's just batshit crazy, uh, and he, he wears different masks. Much and, and, you, and the, 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 the brilliant part, too, is he has different masks. One yeah. has a giant grin on it. One is like a mad mask. You know, one has like, no mouth. One has no mouth. And, and that sort of parallels the, the drunken father mm -hmm. where his emotions change. One, one day he's really mad and drunk. The other day he's happy. And at the end of the film, when he comes to the kids, who they've escaped the horrors of the house. And he's like, I'm so sorry. And they're just like, yeah, I like that, that it wasn't just like neatly tied up. It's like, he's probably going to be shitty the next day to him. They're like, right <laughs> now you're wearing your smiling face, apologetic mask. Yeah. Tomorrow it's going to be a different mask. Mm -hmm. um, so, so many, a very simple film with so many layers um, of things going on in it uh, that your average moviegoer might just watch it and go, well, I'm a kid in the basement. If you're just looking for scares. And, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it, I like the fact that, it, speaking of when the kid's trying all the different ways to get out, there's, I don't remember, I think it's the part when he gets like in behind the fridge or the freezer to the garage yeah, or whatever, yeah. and he can't get out, and they just hold on him, just like crying yeah. for like, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. And just taking that time to just show his reaction to the fact that he's not succeeding. Yeah. As opposed, as opposed to just like getting to the next thing. And I think in hindsight, I, I, I think it was justified. But at the time I was like, I think I would have liked this and it would have been a little more creepy if we didn't see the ghosts of the kids. Mm. We just heard their, you know, disembodied voices on the phone. Yeah, I think that was just a way to keep the visuals interesting when it, you're locked in a basement for most of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> and it's that's again very Stephen King like. I think of like Pet Cemetery. There's right. the 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 kid that got hit by a truck, right? That's guiding our main character yeah. kind of through the story. Yes, this physically seeing the dead ghosts. Is... I think I read something too that he was kind of inspired by uh, the Devil's Backbone, Guillermo del Toro movie. There's lots of ghost children in that, Ooh. so visually probably going for something like that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. mind it, but I I. Yeah, you, you I wonder get it why been. it's there. Yeah, because there's a couple of creepy moments, like the one kid hanging upside down, and when they cut back to the the '80s kid in the arcade, he kind of reminded me of that lame character from Stranger Things. Everybody loves that character, Mike. Do you remember the part in this movie when the kid climbed on top of Ethan Hawke's house <laughs> and, and, and played guitar, played Master of Puppets, yeah. uh, to attract thousands of bats? And then had to awkwardly get off the top of the house to get into the door to avoid the bat, as opposed to just playing right in front of the door where he'd be fine. Right. It had safe. to be on top of the trailer with, with panoramic shots of red lightning in the background. Well, see, Mike, that's because... The most metal 80s album cover ever! See, that, Mike, that's what's called visual storytelling. Little kids sitting in a basement, fucking boring. 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 Even though... Themes, the boring. Themes are boring! <laughs> Themes are so 1990. <laughs> when you walk away from a movie and, and you kind of have a feeling or it sticks with you, that's good. That's a good sign. I made you some breakfast. What did you put in that? Salt and pepper. So Mike, would you recommend the Duffer Brothers? No, but I would recommend uh, The Black Phone. I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't watch the trailer. Uh, kind of defies genre, because it's barely a horror movie. Like, if you're looking for something really scary, this isn't going to be it. It's more just has a general, like, kind of uh, haunting atmosphere to it. I like that it didn't overindulge and it didn't overexplain. Coming of age story of a young, young boy in the 1970s and uh, with, with a, a story through line of fatherly abuse, abuse in all departments. And, um, and yeah, it is coming of age because at the end, he's walking through the school, you know? They, they mirror that in the beginning when he's like petrified of the bullies. He's walking quickly, he's hiding. And then in the end, he's walking head held high and he plops down at the science desk and the girl's like, Hey, Finny. 
heard you beat the shit out of Ethan <laughs> Hawk with a phone. <laughs> and you did it 20 years before Russell Crowe. <laughs> Nobody gets that joke! Well, that was a lot of fun talking about that motion picture with you, Jay. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but I think it's finally time I make that appointment at the eye doctor. Um. I've been having a real hard time reading words up close. And I really want to finish this great novel. Uh, well, if you'll excuse me. Mm -hmm. Ow! <laughs> oh, my knees! Oh, oh! Are you having a hard time getting up? Oh, yeah. oh! Oh, my back! Oh! Oh! Jay? I think something might be wrong with us. What? Did you say you want to go see Thor Love and Thunder? I don't watch movies with love in the title. Or Thunder, too loud. You're crazy. Oh no. Oh no. I think I know what's happening to us. <laughs> <laughs>